All right, and we're back. Nocturnal Dark with a brand new deck just for you in your head. And today we have a broken mirror. This thing is actually really broken. I can't wait to show you. Let's get into it. And we're back. We're trying to break a few cards today. And the way we're going to break them, well, a few mirrors, I should say. The broken mirror is the main card that we're trying to break. This thing is insane, but it's also a bit of a jerk. So I need to mention this at the very start. And before you buy any of these with your wild cards, you need to know that it can actually whiff. So the way that this works is it's a six drop enchantment. And when you play a creature, it's going to flip a coin. And if you lose the flip, then you make nothing. There's no copies made at all, so it can actually whiff. It's like a 50-50 gamble with this card when you buy it. And it's also, you know, when you're playing it, it's pretty risky. So the I avoided it for a long time. But I'm, I actually pulled a couple in a few card openings. So I thought I'd build around it. So, yeah, this I needed to say that at the start, that there is a possibility of this doing nothing. So... Before you spend any money on it, you know, watch this video and check out all of the gameplay because you'll see it whiff a few times in my videos and the deck still wins, still performs, but it just needed to be mentioned. So that's out of the way. When this goes off, the way that it works is it flips a coin and if we win the flip, it makes a copy and then it flips a coin again and again and again and it makes us, you know, three, four, five copies of creatures. So we're trying to use the ETBs of these creatures to their maximum value. We have Cold and Familiar. This is going to drain and gain. So if we get four copies, it's going to five damage to them. We gain five life. So you see what it's trying to do. We have the Familiar. We have the Corpse Knight. We have the Elf Noble. They're all trying to do the same thing, except if they are all down and then you start looping this over and over, with a mirror, you just win. So it's just this, you don't even have to attack, really. Um, the Witch's Oven actually helps you, enables you to do this in their turn as well. Even though we have a Fires of Invention, in their turn we can sacrifice a cat, bring it back, and then potentially get four copies sitting there doing what we need them to do, block. And it's going to do the damage too. It's going to drain them and will gain. So it's, it can really help the oven loop and the familiar. We know it. We've seen it before. But this is this works really, really good. Um, the other things that I have in the deck. The Charming Familiar. Um, the Charming Prince. This guy is insane. So he comes down. Scries too. So you can dig into the deck for land or the mirror. Um, gains you three life against red aggro, that's really handy, but he can flicker a cat or a f um, elf noble, you know, so he can get ETBs to loop. So if you get four copies of him, you get five choices. You can scry two five times, you can gain three life five times, or you can, you know, flicker five creatures. But you get to choose different ones for each copy, so you can go scry two for one of them gain three life for one of them you five times so that's you know it could be less could be more it really depends on the coin flips but you can see how crazy he works in fact i think that's him in the mirror so um yeah i've got four copies of him and then the murderous rider he's in here because planeswalkers and big chunky dudes that are just getting out of hand and if they've invested lots of mana in a guy and then you can just ping it off the off the deck it's sort of he, he's quite valuable and needed in the deck, but he's also a pretty good target for the mirror. If you get four copies of him and swing in, that's, you know, like a eight, eight life gain right there. So that's not too bad considering the dual ability. Um, the Deathless Knight, this thing is going, because we're gaining life so much, like just ping one of these and then you get this straight back to hand and that can actually really come in handy because by the time we have a mirror we might not have many cards left in hand and we're relying on the cats and the oven so if we have this guy in the graveyard we can just get him back get him back and it just you know repeats with a bunch of these guys swinging in and it's stupid so <laughs> he's in here just a couple of copies because he's dedications but also 
you know, he doesn't really have an ETB. So he's just there for a bit of pressure because without the mirror down, him being a 4-2 haste can really push their life total down enough that we don't even need the mirror. We can get just enough drain with this loop, you know, so and flickering. So it can really get them low enough as it is. So yeah, that's all of the creatures there. But I need to mention that you can win the game with her coming down and getting three or four copies. So three or four copies with this will win you the game because she doubles, triples, quadruples. She just stacks on each other and it goes crazy. It just wins you the game. So yeah, that needed to be mentioned. Um, so that's all of the creatures in the deck. Um, obviously you mentioned the Witch's Oven and the loops that that does, but the Wish Claw Talisman, this is here particularly only one copy, and I'm a little bit on the fence about it, but this thing can actually just fish out the right piece at the right time, and that's a crack the glass emergency sort of moment, where you need to find the mirror, you need to find the fires, whatever, and then you get a second time to do this. So it's not that bad that they find one, we get to find two, and I feel like that's enough to have one in here, because if we had a bunch of them, you'd have to do a whole brew around it, obviously. So I only have one anyway, so I thought I'd test it, and it worked. It worked really nicely. So, yeah, I have the two Rakdos lockets, because, you know, this is a dual ability. It's going to ramp us up to the Mirror March, but it's also going to be late game card draw, since we're dumping our hand pretty quick. All of these guys can go straight under the bus, and I'll get to that later. But we're going to just be emptying our hand pretty quickly and then this is just going to give us a few late game when we have the mirror a few cards to play with the mirror. So this is good to get the mirror down and then draw into the deck to play cards. So that's the dual sort of thing. But I'd have four copies but I thought I'd split the amount with the Fires of Invention. And what I noticed with this is this thing does a crazy loop with this. So if you can have seven mana and this down, you play this for free, and then you play something like a, you know, Elf Noble. So that's the way that you can sort of get it down and then play it straight away. So I think that ability to do that is the winning combo, because normally if you're tapping down six to play this, you're sitting there, in a sitting duck waiting to be killed, and you might be able to stick around, but you know, you're sort of hoping for the best that they can't destroy this or bounce it back to hand, which is pretty well, one mana for them, and then we've got to spend you know six mana all over again. So, you want to put this down and use it the turn you do. So, doing that with one of these goes crazy. So, when you can have this down, and then you drop your seventh land, play this for free, play her, or you know, him, or the cat. Uh, or the prince and gain a bunch of life so you're just hoping that you get heaps of copies heaps of copies and if you play you know the prince and then choose three life he comes back to hand you set up for next turn for a creature with the mirror straight away so you can see how that sort of works but one last sort of mention is this gruesome menagerie this thing is stupid so if you have a mirror down you can see that everything's three and under all creatures except for this guy that's not that important but you know, three creatures, you choose a cat, a knight, and the noble. And then they all get copies and copies and copies, and it just wins you the game. So that's just late game craziness. But it's good having three copies in here, mainly because you can destroy you guys under the bus. So when they put down creatures on swing, you can go, yes, I'll block with the Charming Prince. I've used it, no worries. You just keep doing that, and then you're setting yourself up for this late game mirror and menagerie, and it's just going to blow them off the friggin' rocker. So, <laughs> yeah, this is the one of the you know crazier plays that can win you the game as well. There's about three or four plays that win you the game in one turn. This, um, it, you know, I feel like is questionable to be in here, but that loop I said can win you the game in one turn, and that's what it's in here for. That's why I've only got two copies, but it does have to be mentioned that you can't cast spells in their turn so I've built the deck around that and you know the this does come into play for that so you have to cast this in your turn even though it's an instant so that's to be kept in mind with the combo of him um, and you can only play two spells in your turn so once you've got the mirror down you sort of gun ho you want to sort of you got six mana you could drop two three four creatures and you feel like this sort of slows you down and becomes a bit of a dead weight. But 
I, th I feel like it's enough. It's actually enough that this will, um, you know, copy once with one of these combos and it'll, it will just win you the game. So you don't have to be worried about sort of, you know, needing that. If you can get that, drop that down, drop this and play a creature like this and you win the game. So I think that's more on your benefit than it is on, you know, the idea of not including it. Because by the time the late game gets there, by the time you do get to turn six, you want to be actually winning or, you know, one or two points away from winning. And by doing the drain and gain ETBs means that your life just goes straight back up. So you're throwing these under the bus, but you're also taking a few knocks in the air. And it's not that bad. You're not that worried about it. So you can even get one of these, use this to get one of these and just use it before the mirror and you know get a combo of these straight onto the battlefield that gets you a bunch of life you know this guy this guy and this guy you get like one two three four like well, six life nearly so yeah this is this can really help and so can this so yeah the, i feel like all the pieces have their their place in certain ways and it just works really nice so um, yeah, that's enough chin flap, and it was a little bit of a discussion, I know, but it needed to be explained properly, and I needed to give a few warnings. There's a couple of cards here that sort of need to be used properly, and I think, you know, if I didn't mention them, and you built this deck and spent wild cards on them, then I'd feel like a jerk. So I needed to say that. So yeah, I'm going to let you guys watch the game, but don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and check out my channel. I've got quite a lot of my last live streams. And I've been doing lots of work with my channel art and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I'm also going to be away for this weekend. So there's going to be no content until next sort of Wednesday or Thursday. So it's probably a week off for me. So I saved this deck tech for that reason. I wanted to give you guys one of my favorite decks before I left for a week. So when I get back, I'll go gun ho with a bunch of decks. I'll be going live with a bunch of deck testing. And I'm really keen to sort of hear back from you guys if there's anything you want to see, if there's anything you want me to improve, and what your favourite deck is so far. But enough chin flapping from me, let's go and break this mirror. Alright, so we're going to keep this. We've got the oven, maybe a turn to Corpse Knight. We're a little bit... There's our black, that's good. We get a scry. Cat and the oven. That's good. It's a good start. Especially with this guy. So next turn we can Corpse Knight for two life. That's fine. Oh, that's not gonna. This one. Corpse Knight. And then next turn we can cut with the oven. So before he kills him, hopefully. Yes, beautiful. So we're not going to block. No blockers. Okay, so I think we go in with this. Be safe. So we get a double double drain. Plus the two damage. Okay, so that's, that's good damage so far, considering he's done a gift. If he does another gift here, doesn't really matter because once we get the mirror, we are good. We are sweet and set up. Okay, so before he dies, sacrifice him. Then bring him back in so we can get the double ping. There we go. And I think, oh, is he indestructible? Yes, he is. Um, obviously. <laughs> um, feel like holding the cat back. Actually, we'll take three. Doesn't, doesn't matter so much. Of course, we're going to get a second cat. Uh, 
And we'll put down our second cut. Get another drain guy in. Pass turn. So now we can happily block. What's this going to be? The hinge? Ooh. Okay. So what's he got for five mana? It's going to be the... Oh, okay. So what's that going to be? Six. Going to double it or fight? Yep. And pass to attackers. And we're gonna go like this. Destroy that. Sacrifice this. Bring it in. Now to end of his turn. Oh jeez. Well we're definitely putting him out. That's a nice one. We'll go down to the three cuts. Because why not? And we'll keep them all to block. So, they're probably going to drop something big here. I believe it will be something big. Yes, there it is. So, travel, doesn't have haste. Yep. Still won't attack in. Oh, he is. Wow, okay. Through there. Um. Get another drain. Okay. Another drain again, back to twenty. Um Yeah. So he's gonna swing in, but he's got the travel. Gain the life that sucks. It sucks for us. I really want to keep this. I could use it now. Um. I'm just going to bring in. We get the double drain, double gain. And no blockers. No blockers. So we go to 15. We are looking pretty weak source at the moment. Um so we're going to sacrifice him. Okay, so we missed, we whiffed.
Um, just need to dig in. There's a mirror at least. So here we're going to take a decent amount of damage. But it doesn't matter. Because we held on to this. So what's that going to be? 10, 11 damage. Oh. Okay, I thought it's totally going to put the 1-1s one on. Um. So this sucks. Right, we need it. So this will help a lot. I think this is a game. There we go. That was good. Back to 11. That was really nice. And that's what this deck does really good is uses its life or your life total as a resource just enabling you to stick around. You don't have to worry about those big trample hits. Sometimes you do. You have to race them, but yeah, that worked out pretty good. This microphone's in the way. Full control. Okay, so... He didn't flash that in. Get this guy down first. And we pass turn. Surprise when they don't flash them in. It sort of feels like they are using the card for a different reason to my hand. Uh, yeah, sure. So we obviously know that guy's coming next. So I think we go with the scry. Because next turn we're casting for free. Um, I guess we need it, but I think we need something better than that. So we'll, we'll show this. Yeah, we'll show this again, try and get a, a value from this. And hopefully he flashes in that freaking, doesn't flash in that dude, right? So what's he gonna do here? He can't draw yet. Oh, okay. Menagerie sucks. In terms of my hand, I think my I could almost start this off. No, we'll let that happen. Especially if he's uh, dumping a bunch of stuff. Okay, so. Now we go like this. And we go like this. So we want to... T 
definitely find the land. Okay, so that's really good. Got 16 life, which sucks. But we put this down and we're at 5 land. Hopefully he doesn't throw another mill at us. Dude, that's actually really good. Except he's going to mill all those good cards. Although they're not that good, it's just land. Okay, so there's another land, another oven, that sucks. Okay, so he's pretty low on... low on dudes. And he might have another mill in his hand. Um... Oh, I did the wrong one. Oops. Um, yeah, we're going to go for the scry again. Hopefully he doesn't have another mill. No. It's actually really good. But we need the land. I put down the wrong one. Ah, oh, so it does have the mill. Oh no, it's not the mill. It's the start version of him. But he'll return it now. That's actually pretty good. Um. There we go. And I'm going to sacrifice him. Bring him out. Get a little scryzel. Um. No, we've already got one. So this is where it gets pretty fun. And then we go. Okay, so let's go... None. <coughs> okay, so... I'm just going to do this now. I want to see that go off. Okay, so we get another drain. Okay. You can see the danger he's in. Sure thing. I'm going to draw some cards. Okay, so... Putting him down for sure. See if we can get a bunch of life here. Two. So that's pretty good. We didn't get any life from that, sorry. 
and I'm going to put this down. And then we're going to combat. Let's see if we can get another little sting here. That's awesome. All right, so we got the perfect start. Perfect, perfect start. Go down with our mirror, our mirror, our oven. Whoa, that was a bit of a glitch. All right, so down with our oven pants. Now on to our single cut I think don't want to be greedy at this point I don't want to empty my hand back down to 20 we'll pay two life for sure um, I think we could go this one attack him with a cat He's got to put something down here. Okay, there we go. The worst thing for us. Worst deck for us. So we have to get rid of that. Um, yeah, we're going to destroy it. Bring him in. And we're going for the attack. So we've got to start racing him a bit now because we know that he can he'll be doing so much damage to us. I mean it's nullified by us gaining life, but Oops. Yeah, we try and put him on the pressure. Double it over. Okay, so that's not the best for him. So I think we should still go with this. We could apply super pressure. I'm going to try and show you the plan. I need to go and get the fires of invention first. Don't look at anything else. Otherwise you'll be off track with the plan. And we'll put down this one. And no, we'll cancel that. We'll do that in his turn. In case he kills this off. So he's gonna get a treasure here. A food token, sorry. And another food token. So, you can attack in and then draw a card. I'll just draw a card now. Nice. So, he's definitely going to go for the king. It's a very interesting. Peruskin, I must say. He's gonna like like mine then, that's for sure.
What's he gonna do here? Okay, so I'm going to just play this guy. He's perfect for that adventure side. And then we shall end turn. We still can't suck this a draw. Let's see what he's gonna do. He's gonna do three damage to me by sucking one. I'll suck two and draw a card here. It's two foods, I mean. Ah, uh, no, he's not. Sa he's saving it for the king. Right. I like this deck. I got to write this down. Food. Do I get one more damage? I think I just go like that. Food. Red. Red, green, black. That's going to be an interesting challenge of a brew. So does he have the king in the graveyard, or is he going to go and search for him? It's not the manner to do it just yet. But he can do three damage to me in my turn, and draw a card maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I can do that now. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to save her for the mirror. One next turn we could cast the mirror. So I think our best bet is to go with this guy as our last thing. But I wanted to do it when he had the king or someone decent. Um. I might just hold him. What's he at? 14. No, because I can get it back with the thing. Get it back with this. It's a much better plan. And then I think we go on this guy. Take away his card draw, force him to use two of his foods. Wow, I just scooped. That's weird. Well, more cheese for us. Ha, <laughs> cheese. And that'll be it for me, guys. Thank you, Nocturnal Duck, signing out. And I hope you've been enjoying the deck so far. And let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want to see. And if you've built this and how you enjoyed it, if there's any changes you've made, I would love to hear from you. So, yeah, in the comments, hit me up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow. And, yeah, Nocturnal Duck, signing out.